So the next topic that we need to discuss is the glassy amorphous phase. So this is right next to the uh, rubbery amorphous phase, but this is now at a lower temperature. Uh, so this is the, the glassy regime just below the rubbery uh, amorphous region. This is attained when the polymer temperature drops below the glass transition temperature. So if you are below Tg for an amorphous polymer, this is the glassy amorphous phase. So this is characterized by limited chain mobility, uh, a, a lower free volume uh, because the chains are not moving as, as, as rapidly. They're not bumping as violently into their neighbor. Uh, and so as a result, there's less free volume. Uh, this also results in an increased bulk density. Uh, if the free volume is minimized, and of course the density will go up because it will be uh, more mass per unit volume. Uh, it's also associated with a higher degree of chain alignment because they're able to experience stronger intermolecular force. Uh, there would be a corresponding higher stiffness, as we discussed uh, in the earlier video, uh, and also good dimensional stability. And so there's not going to be much uh, creep in the shape because uh, of all the intermolecular force and interaction between chains. When this material does fail, it does fail by brittle fracture, much in the same way as glass will crack and, and propagate and shatter. Um, so the semicrystalline state uh, is is kind of a uh, a special type of this glassy uh, behavior because the the glassy phase it's really uh, caused by the point at which the intermolecular force between chains is strong enough that uh, it arrests the motion of the chains because the attractive interaction is stronger than the repulsive vibrational uh, randomized motion that's essentially trying to move uh, the polymer chains apart and so um, if it's just this ma mass of random polymer chains this is the whole plate of spaghetti idea with the glassy amorphous phase uh, but in some cases, due to uh, particularly strong interactions uh, between polymer chains, it becomes advantageous for them to actually wind into a more crystalline behavior. It's kind of a folding of the chain uh, on itself or also with adjacent polymer chains into uh, what can be a very highly organized system. So as certain polymers cool, chains can organize themselves to form what are called crystallites. Uh, this has to be thermodynamically favorable. There needs to be uh, both an enthalpic, meaning heat, as well as an entropic, meaning increased disorder, uh, or at least the economy of disorder. There has to be uh, a, a thermodynamically favorable reason for the crystals to form and uh, the crystals must have sufficient time to form. There is a certain amount of time associated with uh, getting into, uh, thermally migrating into the proper orientation to, uh, to create these crystals. So the crystallite region can range in size between 5 nanometers all the way up to 10,000 nanometers. Uh, so that would be 10... Um, I guess that would be 0.1 millimeters in size. And so that's uh, big enough, perhaps, to see uh, with uh, the naked eye in most extreme cases. Uh, so these crystallites, they can align themselves and, and form uh, larger structures, supermolecular structures, that are called spherolites. And these uh, spherolites... Uh, then have dimensions that range in size from one micron all the way up to a thousand microns or up to one millimeter. So you've, you've probably heard about spherolites in other classes perhaps. Um, these are uh, associated with the crystalline regions uh, of 
polymers such as HDPE, high density polyethylene. So the, the basics uh, are, are as follows. The, the, the polymer chain, uh, which is kind of shown schematically here, this is showing um, folded regions in that, in that polymer chain. So you would view this as a polymer that might have intermittent random turns, but will have this highly uh, aligned and organized region. Uh, and so this diagram is really highlighting the different possibilities. And so you could have uh, polymer chain A in red, and then we've got uh, polymer chain B here, which we'll put in, uh, in blue. And so the tight fold with adjacent reentry, let's say polymer B comes in here and just immediately folds right back in and, um, and completes that loop. You could also have a loose fold with adjacent reentry, so it uh, has that random area like we were talking about and then reenters right next to the previous one. A uh, loose loop with non-adjacent reentry means it, uh, it leaves. In the meantime, when it's wandering up here, some other polymer has folded in. Uh, and then it, it joins at a, uh, at a, a different uh, position down the line. And also you can have departure. So at the end, uh, the polymer chains will actually terminate out there in, in what would be the amorphous region. And so uh, usually there's alternating regions of amorphous and crystalline uh, domains. Uh, in that uh, semi-crystalline polymer. Uh, for some polymers, you can actually get a very, very uniform um, crystal structure. And so, in fact, for polyethylene, uh, very regular backbone, uh, really no uh, bumps or warts, you know, on those side chains that are preventing this from packing very uniformly. And so you can actually characterize this with a very well-defined uh, crystal structure. So you see there's the A, B, and C cell parameters for uh, polyethylene in its crystalline form. Uh, and this is very reproducible and can be um, verified by x-ray or neutron uh, diffraction. So it's it's very, very regular. Uh, and so this is looking at several different unit cells of, of polyethylene and, and how that repeat pattern uh, would look. Uh, you see that we're just displacing by one unit cell um, as we move left and right uh, and as we move up and down. So, so if we look at this uh, as a as a bigger picture, we would see that the, the black squares are schematically showing uh, the, the crystalline domains, the gray regions are the amorphic, amorphous uh, domains. Uh, so, as you would expect, the, the density, so there's higher density in the crystalline domain because it's simply packed tighter. So, you can view these uh, crystalline regions as a very tightly uh, folded material, very use, very efficient uh, use of space. Where out here in the amorphous region, well, there's going to be more random uh, chain uh, activity, and so it's just not quite as efficient use of the space, and therefore there will be a lower density associated with that amorphous region. Uh, so it's not as efficient. So, so higher density in the crystallite, lower density in the amorphous region. And this is, this is typical. This is the reason that high density polyethylene is classified as high density polyethylene. The existence of the crystalline domains, the sphere lights in HDPE creates a more dense structure than LDPE, which as you would remember from earlier chapters, because of the branching in LDPE, it uh, prevents efficient crystal formation, has a very low crystallinity, and as a result, it has a lower density. So this is the reason that we have those two different uh, grades of polyethylene. 
Uh, so a single polymer chain can contribute to more than one crystallite. So if we go back to this reentry idea, uh, this is a little bit oversimplified because we could imagine a polymer chain that winds in here, goes out, becomes amorphous for a while, winds back in over here, goes out, and becomes amorphous for a while, winds back in over here. This this is certainly possible. So what this is going to do is create these physical crosslinks. This is not a chemical crosslink. It makes it reversible. But if we were to then throw in some other ink colors here, we can see that uh, now we've got the blue chain that's making some crystalline behavior here and it's folding in uh, to some of the same uh, crystals, crystallites as the other. And so this has a way of, of, of linking the entire matrix of the material uh, together. Now, of course, those chains I drew are probably a bit exaggerated, but that's, that's the idea uh, that you can get... Uh, sharing of the crystalline more rigid domains uh, and that's going to have this overall cohesive uh, effect on the uh, system as a whole. So different segments of the same molecule can be found in both the crystalline and amorphous regions. We've already talked about that. Uh, tie chains span the amorphous regions to link adjacent crystallites. So uh, this diagram doesn't really have a, a lot of, of more regularly spaced uh, crystallites. In reality, it's it's probably more like this. There's a lamellar structure, just meaning there's it's kind of like stacked plates or uh, stacked uh, pieces of paper or whatever. Uh, so you would have the crystalline region here. So we 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 stack that in. Let me get a little bit higher contrast uh, ink color here. Go back to red. And so we, we would have that behavior, then there's the amorphous material, and then it, it crystallizes some more. And so that chain that's shown would be called a tie chain because it is tying together more than one crystalline domain in the same uh, material. So that's the idea of the tie chain spanning the amorphous region. Now... Um, these crystalline domains can stack into a, a cylindrite. Uh, and so that would just be this, this kind of a, a, a prism-like region uh, of these stacked uh, crystalline domains. But uh, probably more common is the spherulite, where as this grows uh, out from the central location, uh, you get all you get all these stacked regions in this uh, kind of... A, a spiraling outward pattern or a, a bullseye pattern um, as shown. And so that's uh, under a, a microscope. You can verify uh, the existence of these crystalline domains to, uh, to kind of optically characterize uh, your material as either semi-crystalline or amorphous. Um, and so those are two typical presentations of these crystalline domains in, in polymers. And so here's a scanning electron micrograph that's showing some uh, spherulites. This is polypropylene. And so we see both large and small spherulites right there. You see uh, that there's there's other, other shapes and, and sizes. I guess other sizes. They're all pretty much the same shape uh, and morphology. But um, here you see our scale bar. So that is a hundred microns or a tenth of a millimeter shown there. Uh, if we looked at how this would, would grow, uh, we would start with these crystalline domains, probably a slightly cooler spot in that polymer as it was cooling down. So we would begin the process of crystallization and then it just kind of makes these domains that spiral outward. Uh, and so you can get uh, more of a um, I don't know, a kind of a, a flocked appearance there uh, in one motif, or you can get that central area that then spirals outward in that bullseye pattern and gets larger and larger uh, as we progress. And so that's another way that sphere lights will commonly propagate and, and grow. And so this cartoon I also uh, liked off of a different website that, that kind of shows uh, two different views. So there's your sphere light. Kind of have the nucleation site there in the middle uh, that then uh, grew outward. There's usually a fairly obvious boundary where.